Okay, this video is going to be on how to use conventional reels for surf fishing. You know, I, I've made a few videos on reels and, uh, you know, my personal preference is spinners. And I'll be honest with you, a lot of that has to do with uh, th these conventional reels intimidating me a little bit. But I also know that uh, most of your commercial fishermen uh, are out there with conventionals and for one reason only they uh, they cast farther than a spinner There's no doubt and with the right training. I think everybody can cast quite a bit farther than a spinner You might save some money too. You know this reel we're talking about today is the go-to reel for a lot of fishermen It's called the pen squall 15 and uh, the people at Bass Pro Shop in Port St. Lucie were nice enough to take one out for me and let me shoot a picture and uh, you know a hundred and forty nine dollar reel buys you a lot now if you were to get a high-end spinner by pen you know in my case I use the Spin Fisher long cast 7500 version well that's a two hundred and nineteen dollar reel it's a lot heavier too so anyways what we're gonna do is we're gonna take you to the beach and we're gonna have a special guest Chris Gallagher and he's going to go through all the ins and outs of these reels and how to use them and we've got some pretty cool video showing the actual cast a close-up of this reel and the line peeling off so stay tuned okay uh, we're on the Treasure Coast and today's special guest is Chris Gallagher avid Pompano fisherman for over a decade maybe two Chris well, yeah, about two. <laughs> anyways the purpose of this video today is Chris going to take us through some of the details on a conventional reel. Now, you've seen some of my videos, you know I'm not a fan, but maybe I'm not giving it the fair shake and everybody deserves to try these because, uh, you know, you're going to get more distance uh, with these reels. So Chris, could you uh, first of all just show us some of these basic adjustments on these reels? And I'm going to focus in on the reel here. Um, you know, we'll, we'll start on this side and you can just point out what everything does. When you first buy your reel, you're going to get it and your spool is going to be pretty loose. It's going to have some side to side play. And you do want some, but what you're going to do is this is your spool adjustment on the side. If it's loose, it will move. You'll feel it move in your fingers. So it's a left to right adjustment on the spool. Yes. So what you do at the beach, once you fill your spool up, you feel it moving side to side give it a little turn a little tighter a little tighter a little tighter until it doesn't move now it's not moving now I'm gonna back it off just enough so I can get a little bit of play out of it okay. now it's just enough play all right so we want uh, for the side to side on the spool we want uh, minimum clearance with no binds now you'll notice I've spit I filled my spool and on this particular model, the Pen Squall 15, there is a gold line that they give you as a guide that makes it so you don't overfill the spool. Okay. And you always want to make sure when you're putting that line on to feed it with your finger side to side to get it nice and even and flat. You don't want it balled up in the center or off to one side. That can be a little difficult and hard to learn. Yeah. But once you get it, you want it nice and even because it has to come off evenly at the same time. And the reason they don't have a level wind on these is they found out the the pros like Chris found out that on the old style reels it had a level wind it was making a shorter cast and uh, I've seen Chris reel this in and a lot of times he, he doesn't even have to pay too much attention to the spool unless it's heaped up on one side but uh, anyways uh, we'll, we'll show that too so okay so we've got that adjustment for the spool what's uh what's the next uh part we're going to talk about here? your next adjustment is your magnets the magnets are what control the spool and slow it down during the fast cast so on this magnet if you were to adjust it as tight as it goes all the way around this is the most drag it's going to have on that spool so if you're brand new to this i would park it all the way over here for your very first cast Okay, so so when you're first starting out, you want more magnets. Uh, your cast might be as long, but if you if you try to have it too loose when you're starting out, what's going to happen? It's going to be well. It, you're going to get a bird nest. It's going to back up on you if it's too loose. So what you do is you tighten it all the way. Do a nice smooth cast. It's not going to go very far, 
but as you keep going and keep testing you keep backing it off until and just keep casting until you find that sweet spot okay mine is a little bit past half and that's where i like to have it it makes up for some wind um if it gets a little bit windy tighten it up and then when you have a wind to your back going out you can loosen it up a little more and let it go okay. a little further what do we got here chris this is just the clicker uh, this you're really not ever going to use. Okay. This is more for boat over the side fishing. Okay, so you, you can keep that off. Yep. What about the other side? There was a lever here I saw. And uh, what do we got here? This is your spool release okay. for casting. So the you got to release that to cast. Yes. And uh, the other thing here? here, this is your drag. Um, so this you'll probably adjust as you're fishing um right. and if if it's you know you gotta have let the line go out if you get a shark you want it to just keep taking it until you get there so you keep that fairly loose and just kind of adjust it as you go okay and if we had too tight a drag we might lose an expensive reel yeah it, uh, out to the ocean uh from a shark a five foot shark can just pull it right out of your pole holder if he wants to yeah okay and uh let's talk about the line a little bit i'm gonna hold this rod <laughs> for you uh, you brought some uh, some line here. Uh, why don't you grab that? And uh, now, now, Chris, I, I will say I noticed you're using uh, you're using mono. Now, what's uh, what's the deal? Why do you like the mono over the braid? Well, mono stretches a little bit, and when you're putting that much force on the line, you want it to have a little bit of stretch. If there's no stretch, it snaps as soon as you put all that torque on that braided line. Okay. Uh, and if it's going to backlash, that backlash is going to be much worse than it was with the okay. mono. And, and uh, not only that, if a braid is stronger, but you take a chance of getting spooled off if you had a shark exactly, on, right? Because it doesn't break as easily. Um, now, I use a 14 pound it's Suffix Tritanium, so it does have some abrasion resistance. Um, it's a copolymer line, so it does uh, it doesn't retain memory. It's okay. Not keep that yeah, limp. I notice it's limp. That's what it I use nice too. And limp. Um, the other thing that you have to have is I use a 40 pound test shock meter. Now this is going to absorb all the torque of your cast. If you don't have this on every single every single cast, it's going to break. Um, 14 pound test just can't handle it. And what uh, when you're uh, putting on your shock leader so you can hurl those five ounce sinkers how much uh how much do you put on you know you want it obviously going all the way down the length of your pole and going around the spool so so what do you figure you're putting like 15 yards or it's, i put about uh it's about 18 feet 19 feet okay because uh what i'll do is okay. i'll make it so it comes down the rod and then you reel it onto the spool so it wraps around the spool at least four or five times. Okay. And then if you lose a little bit of your shock leader, you better put a new one on. Yes. Uh, yep. yeah. You always got to have that full length. Off. Yeah. And I've noticed uh, when I look at uh, other rigs on the beach, it's amazing the amount of people that don't have a shock leader. And then if they get the slightest nick, right. uh, that sinker is <laughs> not coming back. Now, I know you do um, your... Uh, rigs a certain way. I actually brought a rig to show how I cart them around and move them. I don't put hooks on them as I come to the beach. They can be a mess. Um, but I do use the same pound test on my rig as I do my shock leader. I usually pre-make them to keep them individually in a bag so that when I can take them out, they are oh, okay so no hooks no hooks it's not tangled there's loops for all of them that way you can untangle it easily when you get here add your hooks and beads or whatever okay. you're gonna put on it so no. you're just uh, you're just pinching the loop and putting the uh, loop through the eye of the hook and then putting yes. it through so yep. it's a uh, there's no tying involved okay it's just looping the hook onto it all right the bead really good the shock leader, or the uh, actually the, the leads I use to make the uh, the rigs. That's the diamond, 100% fluorocarbon. I do tend to use fluorocarbon. It's a little more expensive, but this particular model you can get a fairly large roll of it for not as much as some of the other major brands. All right, cool. Well, that's great info. Um, 
Chris, I think what I want to do now is I want to I want to attach uh, this camera to a wrist strap, and we're going to try to we're going to hopefully get you casting and watching this line spool off. It's it's pretty cool to watch, and uh, and that's the reason these reels can cast so far is is you know it's all about friction. You know, with my spinner reels, they're not only heavier, but they're they're hitting the edge of that spool where with a with a conventional reel, it's just unspooling and. Uh, you know, I, I know you're casting farther than me. Now, some of it might have to do with these big guns right here. But really, I think if I had conventionals, uh, and you were the one who recommended in one of my videos to, uh, you know, buy one conventional reel and a couple of spinners, and that way... Take you know, it to the beach and just practice with it. Yeah, okay. All right, well, let's break this off right now, and let's, uh, let's get this camera mounted on your wrist, see if we can hurl a few. Okay, you're about to see a series of four casts, and uh, I don't know if anybody's done this, but it's pretty cool to watch this line spooling off this conventional reel. And what you're going to have to pay attention to, I think is uh, interesting, is uh, the way that line floats out on the surf rod. The other thing I like to watch, too, is, is how that line goes back and forth on the reel as it's peeling off. Uh, that was that nice tip Chris gave not to go back and forth too quick with your finger because uh, if you do you're going to get more friction and you're going to get a shorter cast distance. The other thing I want you to watch too is on the fourth cast Chris purposely kept his finger off the spool when the sinker hit the ocean. And the reason he did that is, is he wanted you to see in real time a bird's nest happening on a conventional reel. So enjoy this. Here we go. And uh, keep in mind that fourth one is the bird's nest. Okay, so now, uh, you know, we talked about no line leveler. So we're going to try to show you what Chris is doing with his thumb when he's reeling in. And... Uh, you know, I, I don't know, Chris, uh, do you do you hold it on a certain part of your thumb or no, right in the middle? No, nah, I mean wherever I can put a little bit of pressure on it. Okay. All right, well, let's, uh, let's have you reel this in. You want to get it fairly even, you can go back and forth, but you don't want to go fast. Fast side to side is not as good as nice and filled evenly across. Yeah, that's a nice level looking... Uh, then as it uh, comes in, when your leader comes in, your shock leader, I usually want it off to one side because the, the knot can be a little tough on your thumb. So there it goes wrapped around and that's ready for a cast. Awesome. So so that's a good tip there. You're, uh, that uh, Where that shock leader is attached, you like that off to the side a little bit yeah. versus right down the middle. I've had it rip through my thumb a few times, it doesn't feel real good. <laughs> okay, great tip. Okay, we're going to uh, give you a couple videos of Chris casting. I know our first video was a little bit blurry and that was my bad, so uh, we'll give you some a little clearer. You want your line out behind you to the back maybe even a little bit further than straight back okay um, and then when you get ready to cast you're going to have your elbow up almost straight so this way this don't at the last minute you can pull this down give yourself a little bit more torque to pull rather than pushing with the top hand. and you know chris i noticed that when you cast these conventional reels you never have the uh, sinker swinging like a pendulum swing you always have the sinker lying right in the sand and during the whole cast until you start raising your line you don't uh, you don't ever take that sinker out of the sand so what's the purpose behind that dragging it in the sand like that well there's some different casts uh, people that do competition casting do a lot of pendulum swinging um, when it's wind bait everything involved I don't want to get a bird nest and I want to keep fishing. So the most controlled for me is off the ground. Okay, great. Well, let's uh, let's show you cast a few of these. Notice how he keeps that rod 
pointed right out where the line was spooling out and he's going to get extra distance and uh chris the other thing i wanted to talk about is is after uh, you cast you're watching and you're waiting for that sinker to hit the ocean yeah what are you doing there to prevent a bird's nest you do have to have your eye on that sinker uh as it hits the water you want your thumb and that sinker timed to stop it's not going to hurt your thumb it's not going too fast um, that way that spool doesn't keep pre-spinning as that sinker hits the water but it's also important to keep that thumb a, a decent distance from the spool because when that line is spooling off if it happens to touch your thumb yeah uh then you'll get a beautiful bird's nest yeah, I bet. It, you don't want to brush up against it at all don't try and <laughs> slow it down and speed it up it's not going to happen let it go yeah and then uh and then stop the spool when you get the splash down on the sinker if you do start to get a bird nest just stop it completely don't oh i eat. see now it may in wind sometimes i'll notice it feathering off a little bit that's the wind catching it let it go just let it keep it'll fix itself as it flies let it drop and drop stop that spool all right excellent info chris thanks a lot um i, I think that's going to do it for this video i uh can't thank you enough uh you know chris gallagher avid pompano fisherman this is real world stuff that chris has given us and uh, you know i think i'm gonna reconsider getting a conventional reel the other thing i wanted to mention too is when my dad passed away i inherited a few of his rods there are rods made for spinners and there are rods made for uh conventionals and one of the rods my favorite is a conventional rod i use the spinner on it i don't have a lick of trouble with it so don't feel like you're going to have a wasted rod if you buy all spinners you can you can buy a uh, a rod that's made for conventionals and use it with spinners so they will work uh, they may be a little bit softer but i do know the particular rods that i use they are now making them to work both ways awesome okay that about wraps it up uh here's a great picture of chris and his uh dad mike mike was there for the shoot and he caught a bunch of pops and you know i, I hope you've all learned more about the conventional reels i know i have and i'm definitely going to go out there and give it another shot because i definitely need more distance the older i get you know the the shorter the casts are so if you like this video give it a thumbs up and check out our pompano brownie channel and subscribe and that'll do it for this video